So there it is, the ultimate boomer status symbol, the double pump, double feed Holly. And contrary to modern belief, it's more than just a controlled fuel leak. That's a finely tuned, highly evolved, 60 plus years of evolution in the Holly carburetor, uh, fuel metering device. It doesn't start instantly in the ice colds like a fuel injected car does. It doesn't compensate for altitude, but inch for inch, pound for pound, it's the biggest performance bang you're gonna get for your buck. And at wide open throttle, nothing beats it. There is no computer with these, right? I am the computer. Now before you actually get inside of one of these and, and start messing around with uh, jets and, and power valves and so on and so forth, you need to know your way around the outside because there are a lot of fine adjustments on this and they make or break the overall performance of the car. Now whenever we do our lives on Sunday nights, we always got a lot of guys saying, you know, they want to know the basics. They're looking for, you know, uh, just how to adjust things, how to set things. So we figured let's, let's go through one of these Holly carburetors or actually Holly carburetors in general and go through these external points and show you how to set one of these up like for a first start. Like you just took it off the shelf or you bought it at a swap meet or a buddy gave you one. You want to stick it on your car and get it set so that it's running right and you can make those next steps. Here's what you need to know, okay? So there are two common types of Holly carburetors that you're going to come across. The first is a double feed type like this. These are generally the higher performance carburetors and these all have larger float bowls with center hung floats, okay? And then there's the more common single feed style. These have the smaller bowls and they have the floats all set off to the side, the side hung floats. But for our purposes, the adjustments on these carburetors and the setup on these carburetors is pretty much exactly the same. The only difference would be some of the double feed carburetors they all have a secondary metering, no, they don't all have a secondary metering block. The vacuum secondary ones don't. But some of them with the secondary metering block have a second set of idle mixture screws in the back. Some of them don't, this one doesn't. If you have one that has those screws, just copy the procedure from the front to the back. But other than that, they're the same. And we'll use this one here because it's lighter. So. That's the thing about Holly carburetors. They actually weigh a lot compared to like a Carter or, or they're about twice the weight of a Carter Edelbrock style. So at any rate, um, the points that you need to be aware of. The first, first is your throttle stop screw, okay? And this obviously is the thing that opens and closes the throttle. Working with that are the two idle mixture screws. And there's a balancing act between those three that we'll get to a little bit later. You've also got the float adjustment. Now the float adjustment is checked through the sight plug and it's set through this nut and screw jam screw arrangement. And uh, we'll demonstrate that on, on that engine over there. And then you've got the accelerator pump. So let's start with the, with the, with the, the float height. Because if the float height isn't right, nothing's going to be right. So, and, and forget that this is a dual quad setup, let's just focus on this one carburetor. So, you've got the carburetor bolted on the engine, you've got your fuel line hooked up. If you've got an electric pump at this point, you want to turn the pump on and fill the bowls with fuel. Uh, if it's mechanical, just crank the engine, but make sure that you've got enough fuel going in there so that the bowls are full. So, first thing you do is take out the sight plug. Now you've got one on the primary side and you've also got one on the secondary side but we'll just do the primary for here. Put this, this, these little rascals like to find a way into parts unknown so be careful where you place it. So with the fuel bowls full what you want to do is you want to gently rock the car. If the adjustment is correct you'll see fuel just start to trickle out of the bottom of the sight plug hole. If you rock it and nothing comes out, it means the bowl, the float is set too low. If on the other hand you take the sight plug out and the fuel just pours out of there, it means the float bowl is set, float level is set too high. Uh, the way you adjust it is here. So let me get rid of a 5 8 wrench. Okay, now this could also be done with the engine running. You can do it with the fuel pump on if you've got an electric fuel pump. When you loosen this jam screw here, some fuel is going to leak out. So you want to go really easy on this. You want to keep, you want to keep the relationship between the nut and this screw kind of like tight. So at any rate, 
loosen the jam screw by turning the nut counterclockwise you're raising the level of the float by turning it clockwise you're lowering the level of the float so basically you want to just balance this out until you get that level where the fuel you're gently rocket and the fuel just barely trickles out the bottom of the side block at that point your fuel level is set and then you go ahead and you do it to the secondary bowl also all right so that's that now we go back to the balancing act between the, the throttle stop screw and the idle mixture screws. Now again, this is for initial start, okay? So the first thing you do is turn the idle screw out, idle stop screw out until the throttle is completely closed, until there's no movement, right? So, right, well, this is really out there. Okay, right about there, okay? Now you wanna go one full turn. So there's half a turn and there's a full turn. That's your initial setup there. On the idle on the idle mixture screws, you want to take these. I can get in there. Come on. Whoop. You want to take these and screw them all the way in. Now you want to go just to where they stop. Just just where they're snug. Don't go, don't go anywhere past that. Now you want to come out one and a half turns on this. One, and that's a half. That's one. And then there's a half. And now you turn around and you do the same thing on the other side. All, right. All the way in. And then one and a half. Okay, that is your initial setup. With, with, the, car, with the carburetor set up like that, you should be able to pump the gas a couple of times, turn the key, and she should light. If by some chance you've got to go more than that one turn, on the throttle stop screw or you've got to come out more than a half a turn or so on the idle mixture screws you have problems someplace else you've got a vacuum leak you've got the timing is way off there's something else going on if by some chance you get no reaction from the idle mixture screws that means that you've got a blockage someplace inside the, the metering block so and that's that's a, another story entirely we're talking about just a healthy carburetor and you're gonna bolt it on and set it up to go. All right, so let's go back to this over here. So we've made our adjustments and we started the car and it's idling and you let it run until it's, at, it's fully warmed up, operating temperature. Now what you wanna do is you wanna make your fine adjustments. You can, the way we set that screw, one full turn, is going to put your idle someplace like between a 700 and like a 1,000 RPM ballpark, right? So let's say you want an 800 RPM idle or a 900 RPM idle. At that point, you turn the, the throttle stop screw until you've achieved that idle. Then you start working the balancing act between the idle mixture screws. So the way you do that, you come around here, okay, is, now remember, we came out, a turn and a half on these. So what I do is the very first thing, now you can do this, you can, you can set up a vacuum gauge and set this to the highest vacuum reading, or you can hook up a tack and get it to the highest RPM, or I do them by ear, you wanna hear the highest, smoothest idle out of these screws. So the first thing I do, cars running, all warmed up, is I'll come out about a half of a turn and see if that makes any difference. You know, that's richening it up, about a half of a turn. Generally, it, your, your, your optimum adjustment is gonna be right there. It's gonna be between a turn and a half and two turns. Then, if I don't see any change there, I start going back the other way and I start closing it up. And you wanna keep your turns, the closing turns, to like quarter turn increments. So she's here, and with the car idling, I'll bring it down here, okay? And if I don't hear any change, I'll come another quarter turn like that. Now, as soon as I hear the idle start to drop, at that point, you go one full half turn, and that's where you're gonna find your highest, smoothest idle, okay? And then you go and you repeat the process on the other side, all right? You turn it, turn it in a quarter of a shot until it starts to, to come down, until you get the idle start to come down, and then go back one full half turn. That's pretty much where you wanna be. Now with that, you may want to make a final, fine adjustment at the throttle, at the throttle stop to, to get your exact idle RPM where you want it. But essentially, 
that's the setup. And it takes a little practice. It takes it, you know, especially if you're doing it by ear. Um, it takes a little practice to get it right. But if everything is healthy, if the if the if the timing is right, you got no vacuum leaks, and the carburetor is, is in good shape, all of that, that's what you need to do to get this down the road. Now you have one more adjustment, and you can't make that adjustment until you finally have your idle mixture or the idle stop screw set, and that's the accelerator pump. So the formula with this is to take a, a piece of paper and stick it between this arm and this bolt head right here. You don't have to do that, right? What you're looking for is absolute zero contact here. You don't want any slop at all, but you also don't want this to be pushing down on it. And the way you adjust this, I, I only have one three eighths wrench here, so I have to use this clunky adjustable. The way you adjust it is by tightening or loosening this screw. And you do that until, like I said, it's, it's making contact, but this arm is not being pushed down at all. All right, so it's got to be just, just exact contact. And it, the, the result of that is as soon as you touch the throttle, it'll push down on an arm and squirt. The spring is in there to protect the diaphragm inside the, uh, inside the accelerator pump. There is one other adjustment on the accelerator pump arm and it's a, a two position cam but we're not going to get into that now that's 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 it that's advanced tuning for right now all we want to do is just get this car where it starts idles runs gets you down the road and at that point you could start doing your plug readings and everything else to, to make your fine tuning adjustments or actually get inside the, the the carburetor and work with your jets or your power valve or whatever you have to do but that's step one do all of that right and you got a good running car so that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.